Hey, everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, and joining me again today is my friend, uh, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, Harrison. You too, man. I uh, we, we both just been barreling towards, uh, we're recording this just a, a few, uh, about a week before Thanksgiving, and so it's, uh, life's got us on our toes, but but it's it's the stuff that matters, and so so that's what matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're just talking beforehand just about uh, the gospel and how things crystallize. I think you said the word crystallize. It crystallize when you are dealing with life and death. And uh, so I just came, as I mentioned to you, I just came from the hospital seeing a parishioner and we we talked about the reality of death, uh, that the sting of death might be right around the corner. And uh, that's one beautiful thing about about the Christian faith is 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 it the rubber meets the road, as they say. And it's not just some theoretical abstract idea, this Christian faith that actually translates into real flesh and blood, death and life and the things that matter. And so, yeah, this Christian faith, it, it shines in the face of uh, the midst of death, the sting of death, it shines in the midst of sorrow and suffering. And uh, boy, you know, to be able to pronounce the gospel and chase away fear uh, in the name of Jesus is pretty dang cool. Absolutely. It, it took me, I'll, I'll admit, and, and sort of to, to, to my uh, to my own uh, degradation, uh, Lord have mercy on me a sinner. It took me a long time to sort of work up the courage to just walk into a room and say, you know, hey, you're going to die. Can we talk about this? Um, it, it was something that I always wanted to sort of beat around the bush to or sort of sneak by. And that's not okay. That's that's not what pastors do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, but the, the people that more often than not, they, they, they realize it themselves. And so you're just helping them talk about it openly that you're telling them it's okay to talk about it. And, and we as Christians, we can talk about the reality of death because we have a solution to death and that's Christ Jesus, the one who rose from the dead. And if we didn't have the, the promise of the resurrection, then yeah, it would make no sense to talk about death. We should just ignore it and just plug our ears and you know put our head in the sand and just try to eat, drink and be merry because maybe tomorrow we die. And so not talk about it. But since we actually have a solution of it, which is Christ, we can talk about it. Right. This is actually one of the distinctions between, well, real pastors and, and false pastors. The false ones need to change the subject into something else. They need to, to, to preach to itching ears. They can't actually talk about an enemy that they can't conquer. And so they, they always dance away from it. I guess this is where we're going today. So what, what does Jesus say about the false preachers, the false prophets, the false pastors? Yeah, we think in his holy writ, his holy scriptures, you know, we and we hear this everywhere. We hear this everywhere in the scriptures about, about bad shepherds and false teachers and false prophets. And notoriously, what they all have in common, whether it's a false prophet, false pastor, false teacher, is that they're there to serve themselves in their own belly. They use the sheep, they use the prisoner for their own advantage, rather than delivering the good gifts. And typically, when they do that, they usually uh, handle things through deceptive means. So we were just talking this morning at the women's Bible study about uh, false preachers and false uh, prophets and how <clears throat> they work secretly. In other words, they, they don't come through the front door. They always go through the back door. They always come in through the side. And so they don't hundred uh, percent negate sound doctrine. They don't negate the good doctrine of, of the word, but they'll always add a little something onto it on the side, a little bit of a uh, yeast that leavens the whole lump. And if you think about it, if you've ever done any baking before, I, I try to do some uh, baking of bread and, and I use a machine. So I guess it doesn't count, you know, but, but you actually have this dough, right? A pound and a half of dough that you make and you put a little bit of yeast in there and you leave it. And then what it permeates the whole lump and it expands and it's just a little bit of yeast and it does its work. It's the same thing with false theology and these, these false teachers. Um, they're not there for themselves. They are, uh, excuse me, they, they, they're not for the sheep. I should say they're there for themselves and they always inject a little bit of false doctrine to prop themselves up. And usually they do it not through the front door, through transparency, but they do it through deceptive means through the side doors or through the back door itself. Yeah, it sounds real good at the time, every time they have something to say, but it's almost always about, you know, one of the same few topics. Whenever sort of these kinds of things have to go in and they're self-serving, well, they're not going to be about Jesus, are they? They're going to sort of start with Jesus and then very quickly turn into now you, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's usually it usually focuses on on the Christian doing something and some sort of manipulation of the Christian to get them, the Christian to act a certain way that the false teacher wants for his own advantage, or it's focused on the false teacher himself as the subject of it to get the uh, sheep to serve him. And uh, either way, it's not about Christ. And so uh, I've heard it said before on, on uh, issues, et cetera. It's a, a, a radio station that I've listened to before, Christian radio station. And I love it how it comes on. It says, the Christian faith is not about you. It's about Jesus for you. 
I mean, that's the essence of it. Uh, false teaching makes it about you, makes it about you, and makes it about the, the false teacher. Christianity, it's about the Christ. But not only just the Christ, but the Christ who is for you, for you in death, for you in your suffering, for you in your sins, for you when the world itself is against you. Absolutely. Yeah, I spent a lot of time listening to issues, too. It's a wonderful program. Um, and and it's, it's a place where, again, they... they they point this out that this for you-ness of the gospel, it's it's everything. If, if Jesus is just sort of the, the starting off point or the role model or anything other than a, a full-on savior, you've got this problem now that, that you need to solve. And, and well, the problem with false pastors is that they, they prescribe how to solve it. Um, it. It's one thing, even just sort of with, with the best of intentions to, to leave somebody in their works, uh, because there's no salvation there. Lord have mercy. But but it gets worse when your works always end up serving well me um that that's using a, a good gift of god for evil that that's not just false it becomes demonic yeah and and, and peter actually confesses this in his uh, uh second epistle and he talks about this that their doctrine that is used for deceptive means it leads to uh destruction and so there's this understanding that sometimes we, we we say in our American culture, you know, we don't have to sweat the small stuff, you know, doctrine divides and, you know, doctrine's not that big of a deal. But no, Peter actually says here in Holy Writ, Holy Scripture, that bad doctrine destroys uh, when we have false teaching, it can rip us away from the uh, promise of eternal life. And ultimately, that false doctrine is wretched because it does not point us to Christ. It does not deliver us Christ, uh, does not give us the solution to sin, death, and the devil, but it usually points us, as you mentioned before, back to ourselves. And so uh, good prophets, good pastors, good teachers, they point out sin. They call a thing what it is, obviously. You know, they call a spade a spade, but then they also deliver the goodness of the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, a, a solution which is outside of us, which is in Christ. Right. This is actually why God establishes this office of the ministry in the first place. It's it's to point people to him. Um, when we when we have a, a, an office that, that is established by God, the men are called into it, which means you have certain things to talk about. And, and well, we point sinners to Jesus and the gifts that he has won for us and the gifts that he delivers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I've heard it said before, there's a quote that I've used over and over and over. I, I don't even recall exactly who said it, but he said some of the effect, um, it, it was a, I think maybe it was a sermon or some sort of lecture given to to guys coming out of the seminary, going to be pastors. And he basically said, you know, when when you're in the pulpit, give them Jesus. Uh, when you're at the font, give them Jesus. When you're at the altar, give them Jesus. He said, when they're in your, when they're in your office looking for marital advice, give them Jesus. Uh, when you're when you're at the hospital bed and they're worrying about death, give them Jesus. When you're at their home, uh, sitting at their dinner table and they're talking about the struggles of finances and life, give them Jesus. And he said, never, never stop giving them Jesus. And if you think about it, when it comes down to it, you can go almost anywhere to get advice on almost anything you want. Uh, but when it comes to hearing about Jesus, it's few and far between. It's typically the the church, the pastor, a good pastor preaching Jesus, uh, proclaiming Jesus. Uh, because if you want tips on how to have a better date life or marriage or uh, tips on having better finances, well, there's plenty of counselors, there's pr plenty of financial advisors out there that are more than willing to do that, even for free, 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 uh, free of charge uh, if you buy their product. But to go and hear about Jesus, uh, you need a good shepherd. Uh, a good faithful shepherd to pronounce Jesus constantly and consistently into these ears. Right. It's, it's actually the thing that, that well, we need. Um, this is actually one of the marks then of, of a, a good and faithful pastor is, is, well, it's Jesus all the time because we need it too. If you ever have a pastor who doesn't think he needs Jesus for something, who doesn't speak or teach like he needs Jesus in every, every single one of these things, well, what else is there going to be to point to? It turns into you every time. Um, all of us, uh, it's, it's not just that, that we, we are, are holy, it's that we are desperate for grace. Every pastor I, I know that, that, that has Jesus on his, mouth, on his tongue all the time, these are, we're the ones who, who know what it's like to not have him who, and, and are deathly afraid of that. Lord, give us, give us, give us mercy, give us grace, give us, give us Christ. And that permeates everything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a proper understanding. Again, maybe a little bit off, off subject, but still connected to this. It's a proper understanding of what we say law and gospel. Uh, the, the law then is, is God's good and gracious will. Uh, it's wonderful. It's tremendous. And we look at the law and we see what is, what is good, uh, good way to walk in this life. And then also, as we see that and what God's holy will is for our lives, we also then realize how much we fail and how much we fall short. And 
that is where it brings about confession, where we acknowledge confession is not hiding our sins, but it's confessing it openly. And for the parish and the pastor to realize that they fall short consistently. And that's not, that's not excusing sin, it's confessing sin. And so we don't excuse it, we confess it. And then once we confess that sin, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And just to pour the goodness of the gospel, these words, I forgive you. And so I often say to my, my parish that, uh, it's it's wonderful for the pastor to pronounce the words in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you. Uh, I hear it from myself into these ears, and I also see it pronounced upon the people to see them physically to stand a little taller and maybe their heads to lift up and there's a little bit of a glimmer of a smile. Oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff to hear the forgiveness of Christ upon your flock, uh, to give, to give the good gifts out to that flock not to take from them, not to steal from them, not to manipulate them for your own ego, your own advantage, but to give them Christ, uh, the very same Christ that you and I need as well. Uh, Pastor, that, that's all there is. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. Good one.